Hello, hello, Nicole here of Own Your Mama Co. and On The Mama Booth, and I am so freaking excited. I am joined by the lovely Sky of the Photo Booth Edit and Smirk Photo Booth. Hi, Sky. How are you? Hi. I'm so good. I'm so excited to be here. This oh, my gosh. Is like long overdue. It took way too long for us to meet. But I know. I know. Yeah. We did meet each other. Yeah. I feel it's a month ago, which blows my mind, by the way. I'm like, I can't even believe it was almost a month ago because it feels like it was yesterday, but also last year at the same time. It feels Do like you it feel was- that way? <laughs> yes, because I feel like I just got over the flu. Um, Girl. <laughs> and like I finally re- recouped back into my like day to day. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like it was like a blur since I it was there. such a whirlwind but also just so great to meet you in person finally like been yeah. a huge fan of your content and your stuff for forever and um yeah to finally sit down with you even just like for what I mean we sat down for a little while it was like an hour yeah. and a half or two hours chatting but um getting to work with you too on the photo booth supply go floor was just the coolest and loved getting to know you more and what was your thoughts like what were your takeaways of PBX I love it every year I like feel like I go in with a better plan and oh. I'm so like I should I could have done so much more like I yeah. wish I could have done so much more I think but every year the like reoccurring thought is like create more time to just sit down with photo booth owners like hundred percent you can walk the floor a million times but it just like grabbing a quick drink or a bite to eat with the photo booth owners or even chatting with people in the hall or the elevator, yeah. the amount of like, yeah. <laughs> literally, I feel like elevator pitches like I gave. I was like, I didn't realize these were real life scenarios, but let's yeah. go. <laughs> let's do this. I practiced. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just more connection with the people there. I mean, once a year is not enough. I agree with you. That was my biggest takeaway too, was like getting to meet people and my biggest regret too, like not having enough time. But I was also sick for the last majority of it. And I, I just felt awful. And like push myself to be awake, but it was it was awesome to get to chat to as many people as I got to, and just see people and hear their stories and uh, all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, big huge win was getting to meet you guys and getting to talk about photo booths. It's not often that you get to be around people who just like understand the yes. the industry, you know? Yes, I feel like. Yeah. It's actually just been this past year that I've actually hung out with photo booth owners in town because I feel like the community here now is fun people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's such a different, it's like technical and it's creative. So I feel like even with other wedding industry people and a lot of my friends in the wedding industry are like photographers, planners, florists, yeah. which are more important. Than your, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I get it. it yeah. Makes a difference. Like, I don't think I'm the most important vendor at a wedding or an event by any means, but, um, I just feel like it's such a different vibe. Like I love talking with photo booth owners cause it's just like, we all get it. It's I get it. You yeah. understand the day to day of things 100%. and like the client things that occur. Oh yeah, it's like so specific and unique. Yeah, <laughs> the niche client stories. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's so fun to be like, oh, okay, you go through that too. It's not just like me. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's so good to feel like you have a community and people who relate to you. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like, you're just out here doing it alone. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. No, community is everything. And I totally jumped ahead. Will you please introduce yourself and uh, to everyone listening, who you are, what you do, um, your background, everything. Okay. So I'm Sky French. I own Smirk Photo Booth Co. in Portland, Oregon. I bought my first photo booth February of 2016. So just celebrated wow. eight years, which Woo-hoo. is insane. Time flies. Crazy. In that time, I've got married. I've had two kids. I've quit my job. I went full-time photo boothing. And then as of most recent, I started the Photo Booth Edit, which is a resource, I guess, for photo booth owners. So primarily we do stock photos. We have a membership and just helping people grow the photo booth business because I'm so passionate about it. Just something I needed when I started my business. So I'm happy to bring it to other people. Oh my gosh. And if you haven't heard of the photo booth edit, um, you've been missing out. It is (laughs) such an incredible resource. I remember when you first came out, which let's rewind. When did you come? Like, when did you start photo booth edit? Okay. I'm going to give you kind of a long story. (laughs) I love it. Please. (laughs) All started in 2019. Really? And yeah, I was pregnant with my daughter, my first daughter. And I just like, 
kind of wanted to be out of the day-to-day of events. Yeah. And I like, this is going to sound petty. So much of my content <laughs> was being stolen. Mm. And I was like, I'm just going to start sending invoices. Like that was the joke. I just like didn't have time to like take a legal route or like do anything. I was like, I'm just going to start sending people images or invoices. And I was like, yeah, why don't I just like create content to sell to people? Like, um, but then there were so many facets to that. Like there yeah. needed to be more education around why it's not okay to steal people's images. Yeah. And also reframing that, yes, screenshotting something or saving an image as on Pinterest and posting it is still stealing. And, you know, I've definitely like screenshotted things and made mood boards. And I'm sure I've had some copyright infringement, something, because it is a really blurred line. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, there needs to be education around this. And then stock photos, how can I incorporate this? And then it was like, okay, there's actually no information about starting a photo booth business. Like when I started, I actually bought this PDF and it was like the guide to starting a photo booth. I don't know. It was literally like 20 pages on like <laughs> the history of the first photo booth. I was like, like, this is actually not helpful. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I great. This yeah. is not what I thought it was. So then I had my daughter, then COVID hit. I sat Oof. on this idea forever. And actually the original name was photo booth workshop. Mm. Like I, I have brandy and the copywriting is all under that thing. Oh, and wow. um, I was working on it. I finished the first set of collections for stock photos to be dropped. And actually a good friend of mine, we'd never talked about it, but a friend of mine in the industry launches one day booth workshop. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> and I messaged her and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I was like, I'm so happy for you. Like, I'm so glad this is getting out there. And I had sat on it for so long. So that was 2021. I had sat on this for two years. Be yeah. like, oh, I'm going to do it. And uh, she launched it. I was simultaneously happy, but did I cry? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I would have too. Yeah. Um, and then we chatted about it and I was like, do you know what? I can change the name. Like I'm still doing something different. She was doing courses specifically mm -hmm. and I did it. And the feedback was so great. Like people were like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad someone's doing this. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I mean, it was definitely like hopeful. Like I hope people understand this and want to buy it. And then they did. And I was like, okay, we're going all in. I love that. Okay. So that was oh, 2022? November. November, 2022. So Black oh Friday, gosh. I launched. And it wasn't a membership then. It was just like collection packs that you could buy. Yeah. And then um, Jesse from Mischief uh, is a friend of mine. So she put her contracts on there too, just so it was like a hub of one area to sell yeah. everything. And then in June of 2023 or May, I launched the membership. Wow. And I was like, okay, I can commit to creating monthly content now, knowing that there's people who find this valuable and want more. Oh, absolutely. I feel like, and I feel like honestly, like the industry is just kind of starting to explode too in this area because there is such a need for high quality marketing. Like there's so many new people coming into the industry who have no idea how to market their photo booths because they also like don't really understand the industry right now or understand yes. their photo booths. And so it's just so much to start all at once. It, you have to you have to know how to start your business, but then also like market it. Like yes. that's a lot. And this is where I'm like photo boothing is so interesting because it's creative but it's technical. Like yeah. I think it's more important for someone to get their photo booth and understand their software and your equipment and all these things. Yeah. But people are like how am I going to sell and market my photo booth if I can't display it? Like if I, you know, it's like yes. what comes first, the chicken or the egg, whatever that, like, what do you start doing first? And it's so hard and overwhelming. Again, this yeah. is something I wish I had when I started my business and yeah. I actually launched my business. I threw a launch party and I hired a photographer. Oh, I love like, that. Content is so important. Yeah. And I think so much of my focus was like, just take photos of the photo booth, like set up. Yeah. And then she sent me to the gallery and there were so many photos of people using the booth. And I was like, oh no, those are the photos. Like yes. that is what people want to buy. 100%. But you don't think of that. You're so excited. You just spent thousands of dollars on a piece of equipment and you're like, I want to show this thing off. Like we're obsessed with our booths, but yeah. other people are like, we just need some photos at our event. Wait. Exactly. That's so funny that you mentioned that too, because that's true. Like when I got it, I was like wanting to take photos of the booth. And then I was like, no, wait, this isn't, this isn't it. This is not it. It's, it's the experience. And I know like we've talked about this over and over again too. Like 
highlighting the experience is everything and you do such a good job with capturing that in imagery and it's like high quality imagery it's not just like taken on an iphone like you yeah yeah, you do such an incredible job can you talk about the journey and like the ideation behind getting the kind of photos that you do take and put in your on your website yeah okay so i am just so so lucky to have amazing friends like here in portland that are incredible photographers. So most of the photos are taken by Cassie Yost or Annalie Photo who are here in town or Jess has taken like a set of collections too. And they all do an amazing job. They're just like creative on their own. But yeah. like when Cassie shot the first set of photos and I like reached out to her and was like, hey, this is the idea. Are you in? Like I'm I'm gonna be reselling your photos. Are you okay with this? Like what are the boundaries to this? And she's yeah. like yeah, let's do it. She was like the ultimate hype woman oh. about it. And I think something that's really important to me in any kind of outsourcing I do is hire people that I trust their expertise. Yeah. So really going into these shoots, I'm like, they are going to be the best and the most creative if that photographer gets to execute their vision. Like yeah. I send a shot list every time. Like I'm like, there needs to be photos with the booth, without the booth. Like if there's prints, like let's go close up, all the detail shots, whatever. But I'm also just like free range, like yeah. go crazy, get creative. Like the first shoot we did, it was four different collections. And I was like, like maybe let's try flash. Are people going to hate flash photography on these? Or are they going to love it? And oh, love like, it. Overwhelm. Everyone's like more flash photos, more yeah. flash. I'm like, got it. You got it. Yeah. So it's fun because I get to have this creative outlet of like executing what the actual shoot looks like. But when it comes to the photos, I'm like, I'm going to bring the people in it. I'm going to have the booth in the backdrop. But like, just if everyone has fun with it, it creates way more authentic images. Oh, hundred percent. And this no, way, and- I feel like I'm like taking the pressure. Like when I'm doing my own personal shoots, there is so much pressure that I feel like I want it to be a certain way. Mm. Like again, handing it off to the expert and like, It's me and these amazing vendors, like having fun doing it. And I think that's why the photos turn out so well. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it so, so much. And I love that you guys are also like so on trend too. Like you're aware of the current trends in the industry right now, especially with photography Mm -hmm. and being able to capture that and capture that essence so that like even the photographers who you're going to be working with as a photo booth owner, if you're utilizing these photos like on your feed or something on your Instagram account, like this is also going to be attractive to, it's going to attract the same clients that are attracted to that flash photography from a photographer. Yes. So you're just going, it's just going to elevate the kind of client that you're also reaching. 100%. This is like kind of a side tangent, but this is also something that I love because it's like, we're working with professional photographers. So now like, you know, if a photographer stumbles across their feed, like they're like, oh, cool, we're going to work with Smirk Photo Booth. Let me go check out their Instagram because they're yeah. going to be things. They're going to have so many examples of like how they can photograph a photo booth at a wedding to get good yes. content. Like, <gasps> that's I think, such a smart idea. Again, like, I think mostly people don't think of going and taking like detail shots of the photo booth. Yeah. I think there's definitely a photo booth who do a really good job. Like, creating this social media presence. So photographers probably are like, oh, I'm definitely going to go capture their content. But like, I don't feel like yeah. I look at that way. But I think if things are set up really beautifully and photographers understand like, oh, I can get really great photos of the bride and groom doing this. Like, they're like, yeah, I'm going to add that to my shot list. Yeah. And these more photo booth owners get content of their real weddings because, I mean, I work some pretty cool weddings and yeah. I girl through the gallery and I'm like there's none there's none yeah oh yeah (laughs) it's very very rare that you get you get a photo of of your booth or um, the guests in the booth yeah and if you do then it's like either they're amazing or it's like I'm not gonna post this (laughs) yeah it was just like such a last minute thought of photo to snap that's just in there but yeah spreading awareness across all the things Oh yeah, absolutely. How to market your photo booth is definitely like, if you ever scroll any kind of Facebook group, that is kind of one of these most standout questions is how do you market? How do you sell? Because obviously like marketing has everything to do with getting leads and leads equal business. And so it all kind of like feeds in together. And that's, I think something that a lot of people struggle in is 
figuring out how to get leads, how to market, how to how to sell. And what are your what are your thoughts on this topic? I would love to hear yeah. kind of your response if you ever see that kind of question. Yes, I feel like a business owners and starting your being new in the industry or or not. I mean, still for me too. I feel like we're all looking for this like step by step step framework on like yeah. this is exactly what you do and if you do this you're going to hit six figures or whatever right. that buzzword is but i feel like everyone's business is so different like people are passionate about different things like are you super passionate about social media then you're probably going to show up and market on social media but if yeah. you're not then that is a super daunting grueling task so if yeah. someone's framework is post every day and show up on stories that is like paralyzing. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's just being so clear on what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and how you want to do it. I mean, social media grew my business so much in the beginning, but it came a point where it was taking so much time and not giving me the results that I needed. Yeah. So for me, I will always stand behind like in-person networking mm -hmm. as marketing. Absolutely. Like even I mean, like people bash free events all the time. I'm eight years in and I still do free events all the time. Yeah. Like, I seek out free events. Yeah. Because it gets me in front of the community and I would rather go work a three hour event, talk to, I mean, we'll even say a hundred people have yeah. really, really great connections with, you know, half of those people. So 50 and that feels more successful than an Instagram post that For flops. Sure. That still could have easily taken me three hours after trying to figure out a <laughs> caption. I will say the photos are beautiful on my feed, but uh, yeah, marketing and sales is hard. I think the best tip is to find what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and be passionate about what you're selling. Mm. Like if you don't, if you aren't passionate about the experience that you offer and like the things that your photo booth can do, like people are always like, don't list out the features. But if you're listing out the features of something with this overwhelming passion and confidence, like that is so contagious. And yeah. I feel like people on the phone are like, wait, yeah, they're so excited. They believe in this so much and we want that. But if you're like, uh, yeah, go to my website. Like it, it's not done. But like, if you go to the contact page, like we're changing the website, it's, it's being redone. Yeah. People are just like, oh, okay. They don't seem like they don't seem confident they don't really seem yeah. excited about it they just seem unsure and then they have yes. to trust you with their once in a lifetime day wedding right and yes. and believe that you're going to be able to pull off what you promise yeah, yeah. That's so huge. it's like i think just be so confident create something that you love and know that you don't have to create what someone else has already done yeah like, i was just gonna say that like outs outsource what you can't don't feel confident in if yeah. you if you don't know how to create social media stuff or take good really great photos and that's the kind of client that you want to reach then yes. outsource if you yes. don't know how to create you know your your screens or your templates outsource there are yes. people and services out there that can provide that for you so that's not something that you have to stress and worry about you know it's so crazy if anyone's listening to this and is like i can't outsource like i don't have the money all these things read i think it's dan martell buy back your time mm, i need that's to read like, that changed my life i've always felt really passionate about outsourcing i've never yeah. done i mean in a bind i have done template design and graphic design but i have outsourced that from day one in my business yeah. And my graphic designer tried to go another direction. And I was like, charge me whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I will close down my business if you are not making templates because that is just something I don't love. I can yeah. come up with the ideas for them all day long. But when it comes yeah. to Yeah. And same goes for like client communication. If that's something that drains you and you hate doing, like yes. they're, they're um, uh, what do you call them? V VAs. Yes. You can yes. hire a VA to handle all of that for you. You can give them a script. You can, you know, automate your systems. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And automating systems, that's such a good one. I think people think outsource and they're like, oh, I need to hire a person who is actually doing this, but you can outsource to technology. Yeah. And like, you can streamline your CRM. Like, yeah. And that, that's outsourcing. That is taking something off your plate and game changer in business. Yeah. That makes everything so much easier. And then when you have all those little details wrapped up, maybe you can have more capacity and passion to 
market somewhere like Instagram that before seemed like it was draining, but yeah. now you have free time and it doesn't feel as like much pressure. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> Everyone just take a sigh of relief. Yeah. Yes. No, it's so true because when I started my business, I, I went like the Instagram route too, because I was just completely broke. And I like, I'm like, I don't have any money to throw to ads. I don't have any money to throw to Google. First of all, didn't know how to use Google ads. Like I don't have the time to educate myself on that. Like, so it was like, okay, I'm, I know that like posting every day works yeah. sometimes. Like, let's try, let's try for the photo yes. booth business and see if it works. And so that's what I was doing every single day. I was posting and posting and posting and posting because I'm, was trying to explode my business and yes. you know what? It, it worked, right? <laughs> like it, it worked, but it was, it was exhausting. And it got to the point where I had built up my business enough to what I actually heard about something where. Um, you have like a static feed on your Instagram account. So instead of feeling the pressure of like constantly posting on your account, you have basically an Instagram grid that showcases is basically like a mini website for your Instagram. Yes. And yes. it allows you to kind of have more of a, por of a portfolio um, yes. of your services a on your Instagram account. A portfolio grid, if you will. Yeah, a portfolio grid, girl. It's, it is, it's how, I have like six accounts right now and they all have the grid. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> they all have this static grid and I, up, you know, update it whenever I can, like once a quarter or every six months. Um, but each of them is really strategically, you know, has content based on the client that I'm trying to service for. So I have my main account, I have a wedding account, I have a corporate account. Obviously like clients that go to my wedding account aren't going to be interested in corporate, you know, geared content. So on my corporate account, I'm gonna focus my content on the benefits of the photo booth at the corporate event. So it's going to be like e growing your email list. It's going to be using the survey feature. It's going to be yes. capturing video um, confessionals at a conference. Like all of those kinds of things are gonna be what is on that corporate account. And then the wedding account is going to be capturing memories and like yes. your special day and you know, all of that feel good memory um, content that is literally not going to matter to a corporate client. So <laughs> differentiating your kind of like ideal clients in that way, but in a grid format that way, like if someone lands on your page, they can get an absolute idea, like look at what you offer without having to spend too much time scrolling through a mess of a grid. Right. I love this so much because I think it takes so much pressure. Yeah. Like I feel like with Instagram and usually I like schedule out things, but it's still, it's something where you just constantly feel behind. Yeah. You're like I need to post for tomorrow or I need to post for this week. I haven't posted. And like, it's almost like this guilt, like I'm failing yeah. in the area of my business because I set these like arbitrary expectations. Like it's my yeah. business. I'm going to do whatever, whatever I want, but I'm like making myself fail in that category. Yeah. And you have this portfolio grid where everything is just already answered. The content's there for people. Yeah. And they land there and then send them to your website. Like get yeah, them. To exactly. Tomorrow. I think that is like literally so brilliant just to take off the pressure, especially well at whatever stage you are in your business, because there's so much more to running a business. Yeah. 100%. Like, make it easy on yourself. Make it yeah. easy. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say too, like it, you kind of have to change your mindset on using Instagram as a tool and using social media as a tool rather than it is a social platform and there are ways that you can maximize like the social platform aspect of it by like posting on stories and really like creating a community within your account and within the, the people that you're reaching. But think of it as a tool rather than as a way, you know, like, not a lot of people look at it that way. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think it is a tool. It is something to do having a good Instagram doesn't mean you have a good business. Yeah. Like, you know, like I feel like people put so much, I always go straight to Instagram specifically. I know there's other options out there, but I think that's where we all are. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think it's a tool and use it to benefit you mm -hmm. and make things better. Don't make it a whole separate career. Right. <laughs> like, You're not trying to be an influencer. Like are, yeah. Like people have that as a job or they're a full yeah. job as social media managers. Like yeah. big companies have that because they can afford it and they yeah. see the value in it. But like, there's so many things. Like I remember when I actually like invested into SEO and I was like, wait, I can just sit back, relax and people will find me. Yeah. 
Why Amazing. Sooner? Yeah, exactly. And that like now Instagram has um, integrated a lot of SEO um, mm -hmm. keywords in your descriptions and all of that stuff, which you can still incorporate with like the grid kind of format. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that actually is why I created, um, I have Instagram templates on my website, onyourmama.co. And the reason why I did that is because everyone kind of saw my grid feed and they started asking me to like make custom ones. And I was like, okay, I guess I could do that. And then it was like, it was like too much. I'm like, yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> There's no time for this. Um, so I created these templates and, and a couple of different designs and styles so that people could like it's all editable in Canva. So you can just plug and play your photos and use it as much as you want. Use it as a static feed if you wanted to, or use it as something that you can like refresh constantly, which when I saw your content, I was like, wait a second, like what if? <laughs> right? So yeah, like with your like high quality, I mean, captures and engaging photos of clients using the, you know, again, coming back to that experience and capturing that experience, which is what clients are coming to you for, right? They want, they want to see what they're going to be able to experience with you and with your company. And so as photo booth owners, it's our job to showcase what we can do and the experience yes. we can offer high quality imagery combined with like a plug and play, you know, template design. Like, I feel like we should work together. And we should. <laughs> Uh, okay, and your caption or your templates include captions. Yeah. What? Yeah. So, yeah. So I just finished designing the V2 version two of our um, Instagram grid templates. So all of those include like SEO enriched captions. So you don't have to even worry about SEO <laughs> for your Instagram grid captions. So if you haven't figured it out already, guys, we, um, Photo with Edit on your Momoko are teaming up to provide you guys with a complete pack, um, Instagram template guide, all of the above with her high quality imagery um, embedded inside of the Instagram template. And what I love about this new version is it includes carousel posts, which if you've ever read anything online about the best kind of content to put on Instagram, it's going to be reels, it's going to be um, really high quality imagery, it's going to be carousel posts. So what I love about carousel posts is that uh, you can come back again and again and people can swipe past your, your um, post and then swipe past again and see something brand new and swipe past again, see something brand new. It kind of keeps that engagement going with your content um, and then provides you like more opportunities to share. Uh, more of what you have to offer. So excited to be collabing with you on this. And um, some. so let's talk about details and then we'll kind of go on some other questions that I skipped that I definitely do want to go on. But <laughs> um, I love it though, it was such a natural conversation. <laughs> let's talk about details. So we are offering this exclusive collab for a very short period of time, okay? So do not snooze on this. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, if you're seeing this clip on Instagram, don't snooze on this um, incredible offer. So from March 25th to April 1st, you'll be able to buy this on my website, onyourmoment.co and get um, exclusive photo booth edit imagery and the Instagram version two pack. Um, super excited to be joining with you on this. It'll help a lot of um, new and even existing owners be able to yeah. refresh their feed and either incorporate a static feed if, if posting on Instagram is too much or be able to just refresh their account and give a yeah. brand new look to their account um, and get a fresh start for the, for um, their clients. And like, I feel like all the hard work is done. Like yeah. you get to do the fun part. You get to play, yeah. plug and play, like turn it into your brand colors, pick what photos you love, like edit those captions into your voice and it is done. Like the yeah. amount of time that saves, like time is so important. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah. I'm so, sorry. yeah, make sure to look at the link in the description or show notes for um, the direct access link to all of these resources. And then I'll also put um, all of the photo booth edit contact info there. But before we end and wrap this up, because I do want to ask you some more questions, let's talk a little bit more about photo booth edit. What would you say? Like, do you have any success stories on some of the people that have used your membership site? and maybe talk a little bit more details about what that is. What does it look like to join yes. your membership? Okay, 
Member success stories. I wish I had like a better example of like so and so added stock photos and blew <laughs> up their business. And honestly, I just sent out like a member survey to people because I was like, okay, what's working, what's not. And honest, I think moral of the story is it's time. Yeah, like, that is people are just getting back so much time and just like the hard work is taken out. I mean, even in your own photo booth galleries, like you have to cull through and find the photos that you want. Yeah, and it's like. Or if you get a wedding gallery from a photographer or at a corporate event, like you're scrolling through to find your stuff. Like it's such a niche specific gallery of photos. Like in the first couple of photos, you'll be able to find something that you can post and use within your business. Like yeah. just take the hard work out um, to join the membership. So it's a monthly membership as of right now. Like there's no commitment other than the month. You can also upgrade to the year. We drop a new collection every single month of 25 Crazy. photos. I'm I'm a giver. So <laughs> is it usually more than 25 photos? Yes, because I can't limit myself. Oh, wow. Um, in there as well, there's like a handful of templates that are editable, like print out overlay templates that are editable on Canva. More coming soon on that. There's a couple of resources in there. So there's like a profit planner that I love. I use it in my business. You can put all your expenses on one page and then on the next page, it all auto populates those numbers. So if you type in like what you want to, like your booth types that you offer and what you charge your ideal in a month, or maybe what you do, it'll break down what to save in taxes, what to pay yourself, wow. what, like it's a game changer. And by the like, way, have you read the book, The Profit First? Yes. Okay. So is that what it is? No. So it's a little bit different than this, but we also have a spreadsheet for profit first. I love you it. Can put in your monthly income and it'll break down yeah. the like brackets of like what should go into operating expenses, what should go into owner draw. Oh, so cool. I actually just started, well, I've done profit first with the photo booth edit since it started. Yeah. And I've now officially implemented this into my photo booth business. It is the game changer. game changer of my yeah. life. And I think where it's the biggest game changer is I can always make an excuse of <laughs> why not to pay myself what yeah. I should gain myself. I am so proud of being way more consistent and just like having a rule to follow. I just yeah. changed my corp too, so I actually have like a set okay, well, yeah. already <laughs> now. Yeah. I feel like such a big girl. Mm -hmm. But yeah, profit first is such a game changer. And like knowing like oh, I can't buy this thing because I don't have enough in my operational expenses yeah. to be able to afford that. Like it sets some boundaries in your business and 100%. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a profit first spreadsheet in there for anyone to use it. My favorite thing that's in there is there's like a blog post resource that's four ways that photo booth owners can start an email list. Ooh, awesome. And then a template for like a welcome series, like how to introduce yourself, your business, like plug and play exactly what you oh should get. Oh This is incredible. So yeah, and this is also jumping ahead to questions, but we're in the middle of revamping the whole entire site. So yeah. I hired on a developer to come in so it can be like searchable. You can filter photos like, wow. It's, yeah. It's going to be like a legit stock photo site now. And in with that too, like community has always been such an important part mm -hmm. that I want I, community and collaboration. Like yeah. I'm not an expert in all things photo boothing, but I want to bring on people who are experts in those areas yeah. to teach and better the industry. So there's going to be a community aspect of it that I feel like when I first launched, I was like, oh, a community means a Facebook group. <laughs> yeah. And I just like don't vibe in a Facebook group. And maybe it's PTSD from just like yeah. <laughs> Facebook groups. <laughs> Your Facebook group is the exception. I love <sighs> like answering questions and being involved in that group. That is the only group I will go check into in the photo booth supply co group. Oh, I'm honored. That's sweet. But it takes a lot. Like I don't mm -hmm. think I'm in a Facebook group in the beginning. I don't know how you built it into such an amazing, collaborative, friendly space. But it takes a lot of work showing it's up. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. And so I'm building out a different community platform. I'm so excited. I'm so Oh, I can't excited. wait. I can't wait to talk more about it. But yeah, yeah. I, I got to get into it a little bit more before I can. Oh, love it. I can't wait. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's bar none. Like you're, what you're putting out there is incredibly valuable and I think has been needed for quite some time. And I've only been, you know what I realized? This month is two years. I've officially like March is two years that I've been in the business. Isn't that wild? Gosh, congratulations. I know. I know. 
we need, I need to throw a party. Okay. But, but like that was very glaringly obvious when I first started was that there was not enough resources out there for also like for female entrepreneurs. Like I, you know what I mean? Like, yes. like there, it was very much a, um, a need, I think, to kind of have more creative content and um, materials out there for people to be able to use. And so I am thrilled to be collaborating with you. I think you are so smart, so talented, and um, I am so thankful for even just what you've brought into the community, like leveling up, right? Like we're leveling up this community and making it so much better. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I'm so thankful like you're in it too. Like the more people creating more resources yeah. and just sharing the experience, being in the photo booth industry, just like putting knowledge out there where people aren't feeling like alone or mm -hmm. like questions being answered. It is, it's such a game changer, like yeah. better everyone else does in the photo booth industry, the better our own personal businesses can do. Like we just, yes. all, there's that rising tide quote. I always butcher it, but that applies. Yeah, <laughs> that one. Yeah. No, it's so true. Like we are, we're truly are like, it's so cheesy, but we're better together. And yes. when we can share our knowledge and share our experiences and be way more open-minded to other people's experiences too, like we can all grow and grow yes. together and improve the quality of what we provide our clients too, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's what we want to do, right? We want to provide exceptional service to our clients and yes. we do that by continually learning and continually growing. And, um, yes. that's just what we're doing. Like own your mama co photo booth edit. Like all we're trying to do is help one another and help each other level up their businesses. So without spending too much time either, cause we're both moms and we don't have time. <laughs> so. That is like, yes. I think that's like a huge thing is like, realizing how valuable time is. I feel mm -hmm. like a broken record at this point in this podcast, but <laughs> like to have time to take care of yourself, to be with yeah. your family, to do all these things. And just to like, not have to reinvent the wheel, like mm -hmm. in putting the info out there to help people, like it is, it feels fulfilling for me yeah. to give the information, but also, yeah, if it puts you steps ahead in your photo booth business, let's go. Like, let's do I it. I want everyone's businesses to do better. Cause I want the expectation of hiring a photo booth to be better than yes. what it typically is. Oh my gosh. If we are all on the same page of like the kind of quality that we provide our clients then we can all raise our prices and we can all level up the industry. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's crazy too. Cause I think everyone, I feel like primarily sees like the cheapest photo booth company and they're like, Oh my gosh. Okay. That's what I have to compete with. But it's nope. like, I feel like then these like higher tier companies, like when you hear that people can charge this month, like Catalina just is yeah. doing her photo booth refresh course and then just did her pricing course and is talking about like her first $10,000 company or quote yeah. and getting accepted or when she thought that like her business would never get over a hundred. She's like, and now we do like, yeah. there are people who are doing it and it's not just Catalina. It's yeah. other people like my business does that, which yeah. still blows my mind that like, you can do that. Yeah. You don't have to burn yourself out and charge yeah. $300 for a full day. And like, again, there's still value in the people who are teaching that. Like mm -hmm. I'm sure they're giving good tidbits, but it's like, it can be more. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can make I a wage. Hundred percent. I remember I shared this story on um, the Photo with Supply Co podcast. But um, when I, <laughs> I was watching one of Catalina's videos, she was doing a presentation. It was some sort of like summit or something, and she was talking about um, how she like all of her packages at that time were at a thousand. Now they're at two thousand. Like that's how she starts. And I remember literally watching that video and like being like, oh my gosh, I could never. Like yes. I could never, my clients would never pay that. Who, no one here would ever pay that. And yes. now my packages are at a thousand, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, consistently yes. booking like a thousand dollar packages, but it's just like, it is so much to do with your mindset and also so much to do with the quality that you're presenting out there. Right. And yeah. the expectation that you're setting for your clients too. And, um, 100%. showcasing the experience, man. I've like never talked about this, but I actually in 2020 plan to close down my photo booth business and not because of COVID and not necessarily for having like a child. I was just like, I feel like I want to do something else. I was just so burnt out. 2019 yeah. still is the highest quantity of events I had ever done. Wow. Like 
I had nine events on a Saturday while I was eight and a half months pregnant. Like there was just no boundaries in my business. And uh, so I was just like, I can't continue at this rate. And, but also I'm not a quitter. So (laughs) I was like, I'm just going to raise all my prices. Like I offer really good service. And I also feel like things were slipping through the cracks because Mm -hmm. I was doing, it grew too fast for what I could do. And I just couldn't give the level of service that I wanted. So I was like, I'm going to raise all my prices so I can really focus on those people. And if people are willing to pay that, then okay, they're going to get the best service. And I raised my prices and I was like, someone taught me like a pricing hack that was like, once you get like three yeses in a row, like no hesitation, raise your price. Yeah. And no one was swaying away from my prices. And I've always had them listed. So I feel like you know, that automatically filters people out, but people were reaching out and booking me. And I was like, I, what? It was like accidental confidence basically, (laughs) because I was like trying to be out of my business. But like, I feel like I've seen the best results from this. Like last year I had the best clients ever. Like I am so sad that I couldn't personally be at every single event because it was truly all of my ideal clients Uh and they paid what, like, I don't find my value in the price of my photo booth, but like they valued my company and what I was offering. It feels so magical. Like people yeah. will pay that. And it still shocks me sometimes because mm-hmm. I feel like people too are like, well, I wouldn't pay that. And I'm like, well, are you your ideal client? Right. <laughs> right. I yeah. Like I, I'm not anymore. I can't afford me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. No, that's so true. It was so good. Um, I mean, this has been such a valuable episode. I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for coming on this with me. Um, Thank you for collaborating with me. And um, I'm so excited to provide this incredible resource to you guys listening and watching. And uh, yeah, all your Instagrams. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. Um, Yeah, make sure to check out the description below. Check out the show notes for all of the links. And Sky, I think we'll see more of you. What do you say? Yeah, let's do this again. I love it. Let's do this again. Yeah. (laughs) All right, we'll chat soon. Okay, bye.